Hello everyone. Before I kick off this video, I just want to remind you guys, let's go ahead and like, follow, and subscribe if you like content like this. As well, please leave a comment below on any topic that you would like me to cover. Outside of that though, we're going to go ahead and jump in and we're going to look at how we can build out jigs and fixtures and avoid them when we're machining. As you can all see, I have my part file open. I've already created my setup. I have my XYZ set positionally. I even have my stock boundary created. So let's go ahead and traditionally just rough this out with a 3D pocket. So we're gonna go ahead and say 3D pocket clearing. I'm going to just use a big two inch tool for this part just to get the theory down. And then from there, we're actually gonna turn on stock and we would like that tool to go all the way outside. So I think a lot of people confuse pocket clearing because this is a pocket path that you can't use it for actually roughing in kind of a male plug or a male mold situation. However, as you're seeing here, I am able to use this due to the fact that it works really well for shallow cuts with a heavy step over. So now that we have that, when I'm looking at my part and it's time to run this, I would have to attach it to the table in some way. And as you can see, I could probably double stick tape this down or try to put it in a vise. This is a little bigger part. So odds are I'm gonna use clamps to hold this down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some just standard table clamps on here in my four corners when it's still a raw piece of stock. However, I don't wanna spend my time actually modeling that all out, having to model my stock. So what I wanna do with my roughing cycle is actually create some boundaries that are very generic that I can use to actually avoid those areas why the clamps are there. So let's go ahead and jump back to design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a sketch right on that face. And then I do love very good rectangles from time to time. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some rectangles in these corners in the general area where those clamps are gonna be. Again, because I'm going to kind of do two different roughing cycles here, it doesn't matter how exact I am with where the clamp is. As long as the clamp is inside this rectangle, we're gonna be more than okay. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and grab the line tool, and I'm just going to connect the upper area of each one of these. And now one thing to be aware of when you do do this way is you do want to be extended out pretty heavy past because again is we're going to need that two inch tool to at least come off of the part so we're going to go and extend everything out i'm going to get these a little more towards the corners i'm actually pretty happy with that if i wanted to do some constraints here i could always do horizontal vertical and square everything up which would make it a little nicer but we all know sometimes those clamps don't go on perfect so this gives me that lenience and that flexibility. So now when we move back over to the actual manufacturer side of Fusion, again, our tool path is going everywhere, but you can see where these rectangles are that we drew. That is the area that we wanna avoid. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a, instead of bounding box, we're gonna go to selection. And then I'm actually gonna pick the chain to use for that exact feature. So as you're seeing is my first click was to create that first rectangle. My second click on that line allowed me to modify into that kind of cross or lowercase t shape that we wanted. And now we can hit okay. So this is gonna look a little hectic for some of you because we have this green line that's extended way out past that actual yellowish orange line. But that doesn't matter because Fusion knows we want this boundary for our tool. We wanna to start where there's stock, of course and we wanna work into our model. So it's actually broke out very well. It's just gonna look a little funky the first couple times you do this. The one thing I do want to do here is I don't wanna to be tool outside a boundary now, I want tool inside a boundary. And when you think about that, I don't want that tool in any way, shape or form to go outside of the green area. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what we're gonna see now is it went ahead and calculated our tool path again. And if we tilt down here a little bit, we'll see that we're actually helicing in here but in some cases we are dropping down and wrapping outside of our stock to get in deeper and deeper with each cycle. We're also not anywhere near that outer blue area. As you can see, it's actually trimmed itself back to only get far enough off that we're not touching the stock. And now thankfully we do have the ability to see the in process stock here. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle off my tool path. If you guys didn't know you could actually do this with F7 when you're clicking your operation. And now we have all that stock avoided so that we can machine everything out. Now, in the event that we did machine this out, we're probably gonna move our clamps and we're gonna have to come back and we're gonna have to knock down those four little islands that we now have in the way. Well, the good news is we can duplicate what we've already done. 
And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and edit. We're gonna leave stock the same. However, this time I am actually gonna pick just the rectangles as my boundaries. And for this actual scenario, I may want to extend that tool a little bit over so we get some overlap. So I can either do an additional offset or I could actually say tool outside of boundary. Again, personal preference, actually you would wanna to go tool center on boundary. You never wanna go outside because we wouldn't want it to recognize that model again. However, we do also have rest machining on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna give it any additional offset from tool center, but I am gonna allow the rest machining to do its thing and calculate out what it needs to do to complete and machine down those corners. Again, we did turn off my tool path here, so I'm gonna hit F7 to bring it back. And as you can see, we're now going in and we are knocking down those corners and cleaning everything up based off what we've done so far. I can also see here that I am getting some deviances where you know those clamps aren't actually far enough away where we can get the tool all the way around in the first roughing cycles. So again, this is a neat thing with being able to do a custom boundary here is I can go back to design, I can always drag these out. And as you're seeing, some of those constraints are coming in extremely handy now where it's auto adjusting anything and everything that I have set. From here, we can go ahead and jump back to manufacture. I will have to regenerate my tool paths as always. But again, based on that regeneration, I can now see that we are getting in and all the way around my profile and still have room here that I could get my clamps on the corner. And then again, we're gonna come in with those clamps and we're gonna machine off where those clamps are based on everything that we've done. So let's look at this a little differently now. We're gonna move over to another part. Okay, so let's create our setup and everything for this part. As you're gonna see here is I actually have my model in the background. And if you've ever had this problem where it's like super tricky to click your model, well, it's probably because you have a stock box in here, which I do because this is a jig and fixture template I use. I actually have a video built on this if you guys wanna check that out. Uh, however, if I expand out my design tree, I could turn that stock off and turn the actual part to be able to grab. So let me go ahead and expand everything out. You guys are seeing this and you're probably like, wow, we're way deep in the design area. I would agree completely. That is a misclick there for picking the stock. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle the stock off and pick my model. And then we can move over to stock where we're gonna actually say from solid. And then I can pick that component over here in the left design tree. So let's go ahead and minimize everything back up. We don't need any of it any longer at this point. I'm gonna leave my XYZ up here at the top. I believe in the case of this part, we have DWO and DFO and G68.2. So we should have no problem. Now, if I didn't, I would be putting my work offset at my center of rotations. And in this case, we do have a machine model in here. So let me back up here real quick. We're gonna go and position this so that it sits on the table. I'm actually going to give this a fixture attachment point, which is the bottom. And then we're gonna put it on my table. And then we actually don't need a Z offset anymore. So we're gonna zero that out. Let's go back here. So we're gonna say selected point. That is my fault. And my selected point again is gonna just be bottom center of my jig. And then we just have to zero back out Z now that it should attach to the table as such. So now a lot of you are seeing this part and you're probably laughing a little bit, but the idea here is, is the way that the customer wanted to machine this is they wanna be able to have tabs here that they can break off but this gives them access to all sides of the part. Well, now the problem is, is when we go in to do our adaptive clearing here, so this time I'm actually gonna do adaptive clearing. We're gonna use a just half inch flat end mill. Should have one here in my library. If not, we'll pull one from the default fusion. Let's go half inch flat, aluminum roughing. And then kind of like you guys saw me do before, we're just gonna go ahead and do some tool orientation to Z. And then from there, we are actually gonna say, let's go ahead and do a bounding box around our part. And then we do want our stock turned on. And then from there, we could actually set everything up. So now we're coming in from the side. Again, we're doing a adaptive clearing and you're gonna see this tool path come in. And now my roughing tool path is hitting my vise. This is never good in any way, shape or form. We fully want to avoid that vice. We do not want to hit it in any way. I also am actually going to show you guys another trick here. Because our origin is on center, if I was to do half and half on this part, I can actually say, go to the origin, and then I would like to set an offset depth 
However, because of the whole fun game of doing your stock to leaves here, you can actually set an expression here, which is vertical stock to leave. And then you're gonna times that by a negative to get a negative dimension. And then if you really wanted to bump this up just a hair further, again, this is super advanced for some of you, we're actually going to uh, subtract another 20, just so we're always 20 past that dimension. So in this case, I actually screwed up that expression, and this is where you have to be very precise with adding inch as your unit. And now you're seeing that we're actually going stock to leave 20 past, plus additional 20 to get us just past halfway. Because again, where our work offset is, that is where we're going to, and that's what we're machining out based on our part. So now that we've done that, again, the whole goal here is, is we wanna avoid this vice. So let's go ahead and draw out our boundary. So again, I'm gonna go back to design and I'm gonna create my sketch. Again, this is a 2D sketch, so I can actually sketch right here on the stock face. It's not a big deal. But now I need to create the actual boundary. The boundary does tend to be tricky, and a lot of people have probably noticed that is it's actually in some cases easier to do things with lines other than my fancy method of drawing rectangles all over the place. However, I'll leave that up to all of you which way you choose. In the case of this part, again, we're gonna be very exaggerated with it so that we can get as far out and make sure that tool can have all the room to move in any way, shape, or form. And again, let's throw a couple constraints in here. We're just gonna perpendicular this so it's square and my OCD doesn't take over. But as you can see, I can adjust this or I can actually project the edges of my vice to use. I'm just gonna leave that gapped off just a hair. But as you're seeing, we now have our sketch for being utilized in the manufacturer workspace. So again, as we're gonna go back into our roughing cycle, and this time we're actually gonna to go to our geometry tab and we're gonna say, I want a selected boundary. And this is gonna be my selected boundary to use. And then we have our tool orientation. And then again, remember you want your tool inside boundary. That's a key element here. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. So this is now gonna calculate out, and it's gonna take a couple of seconds. There is a lot going on in this roughing cycle. I haven't adjusted any part of this tooling. But what we're mainly looking for is, again, to avoid our vice at all cost. Again, this is very beneficial so that we're not hitting our vice. We're actually able to go in, rough out anything and everything that is in the way. So now, one more pro tip that we could do here is I can actually add in the ability to put tabs in here so that we can avoid those tabs as well while we're machining. So we can go back to our design workspace and I'm gonna do it with just nothing more than an ordinary box. This will be quick and easy for me to do. Again, I'm gonna draw, you know, a exaggerated kind of tab shape. I would streamline this a lot more to a more precise item that you guys would want. But now we're gonna do a move. We're just gonna move this guy into place. I'm gonna go point to point. So again, top dead center. I'm gonna look at the bottom of my actual stock. So let's go ahead and turn that stock off. And I'm gonna just place this roughly here. Oop, holding control to pick that point. And now I may actually add a second one in there so we could take that first one that we just made, a good old fashioned control C, control V. We're gonna slide it over. And now I have my two tabs. One neat thing is, is these tabs are extremely overkill by all means, guys. So I'm gonna go back and I'm actually gonna adjust those. So let's make those, you know, 0.5 by, we're gonna just leave them at two inches long by 0.5. So as you can see, again, that automatically updated for what I was doing. So if we go and jump back to manufacture, this time now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this tool path. And I'm actually gonna go to geometry. And down here at the bottom, we have what's called model. So the cool thing about model is, is I can actually include the original setup model, which is that actual part, but I wanna add additional models. And those additional models are gonna be those two tabs that we drew. One thing that you're seeing here is I can't select them right now because my sketch is still turned on. So this is where, again, getting familiar with your design tree is gonna make a big difference at the end of the day for the ability to turn sketches on and off, as well as being able to turn on and off different bodies as needed. So again, we could go to our bodies over here on the left. I'm gonna go ahead and pick those two bodies. I'm gonna now hit okay, and we're gonna let that roughing cycle run. It will take a couple of seconds. Again, we are doing quite a bit here. 
but we are going to see that end mill now avoid those bodies as well avoid our vice altogether when we come in to machine out this part again we could always come back and machine those actual tabs out of our way but this is just a quick and easy way to get in here and get this stuff done but as always guys as you see here we're going to hit f7 you can see i now machined my tabs into my actual roughing cycle to avoid and we can machine those off hey everyone thanks for sticking around until this part little easter egg on this video if you guys want we actually have a support portal we offer free support to all fusion 360 users all you have to do is use the link down below we at JITCAD can believe that anybody and everybody should get the answers they need when they need them on top of that we offer everything from private sessions to actually full-blown support packages to help you and your company succeed inside of fusion 360. with that said you guys have a great rest of your day